All right. A couple of minutes early, do the usual uh, camera check, make sure everything's looking good. Uh, if someone can give me a thumbs up that everything's working. Let's see, Jess is online. Good morning. Uh, can I get a thumbs up? Make sure everything's good. You can hear me, see me, all that stuff. And the feed's working correctly. All right, excellent. Looks like we're here. All right, we'll just give it a minute or two. So I'm a bit early. See, I set up a little field range here. All right, interesting week on uh, week four of Beat the Outbreak League. There's getting close to, I think, 7,000 people on here now. And it's been fancy dress week. And loads of people have been posting some amazing costumes. Uh, I've been doing a different one every day. My goal was to just do a different one for all seven days. Um, so I've got today's planned out, so watch out for that if you haven't signed up. And next week they're going to publish a brand new target, so we're all excited to see what that one's going to be. All right, so it's 10.30. We'll kick off here. So I'm Coach Dale, uh, Level 4 NTS coach and competitive archer on Olympic recurve and barebow and I dabble in trad as well. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is field archery. And uh, I lo I've been looking forward to this one because field archery is my most favorite uh, discipline to shoot. I think it's the most fun. It's the most challenging um, for sure in many respects, and I'll talk about that later. But the goal of today is to introduce it to those that may not know and hopefully inspire you to want to have a go. So what is field archery? Well, it, it's easiest to explain field archery by comparing it to target archery, which is our outdoor format. And if you've never done the outdoor format, I'm sure you know, if you've ever seen the Olympics, you're standing on a line, you're shooting a fixed distance on a nice level, flat surface. Um, you're either shooting 30, 50, 60, or 70 based on your age bracket. You shoot 72 scoring arrows at that distance for the whole event and that could be a one day event a two day or a three day even if you're playing match play the point is you get your sights set you get your feet set you get in the groove and off you go and all you can see in front of you is the target with field every target or stake is different so you'll have a different distance you'll have a different size target face you'll have a different elevation You'll have a different visual. You might be going down a tunnel of trees. You might be shooting over water. You might be shooting down a hill. You might be shooting up a hill. Everyone is different. And that's what makes it so cool. Um, there's multiple uh, challenges to deal with field. You've got an even terrain. You're also walking a course. It's like a golf course. Another comparison would be if you've ever been to a golf driving range, you stand on your mat, you take the club, and you bang the balls, hopefully with some intent of practice. But when you're playing golf, you're walking around a course. And so field course is exactly that. Different formats have different number of stakes, but you're walking around, and that means you could be three miles away from your car, so you need to carry your equipment. So that's another difference. You have to be very self-sufficient. You also have to be physically capable of walking your three and a half miles up and down terrain, carrying your bow and whatever else you might need, your quiver or a chair or water and food and all that stuff. And also you've got difference in uh, weather. You know, sometimes these field archery courses, they're down in a valley and they get dark and humid and then you walk up to the top and they're bright light. So that can affect your string blur. So there's all sorts of stuff which makes it really interesting, unique challenge. Now there's different formats. I'm going to predominantly focus on NFAA, World Archery, 
I'm going to mention 3D and ASA later on because it's a uh, similar setting. So World Archery Format has 24 targets on a course, and you'll shoot three arrows per target. You can tell a World <laughs> Archery course by the types of target faces you'll see. So I'm going to hold up here. This is the black and gold face. This is a 20 centimeter. So in indoors, we shoot on a 40 centimeter. Well, these are half that size. And on field, you could shoot out to 20 yard, 20 meters on this face. The scoring will be six on the inner, inner gold, five, four, three, two, one. Now, these target sizes go from 20 centimeters to 80 centimeters. And part of the fun of field, especially if you get into unmarked distances where they don't tell you, which is you only really do that on very specific set of tournaments. For the most part, they're marked. They'll tell you what they are. A little plate on the floor as you walk up will, will tell you 50 meters or whatever. But these targets aren't fixed either. So for this 20 centimeter, you could show up on a, st on a, on a stake and shoot 10 meters or you could shoot 20 meters. With World Archery, they're even, so it'll be 10, 15, 20. The maximum you shoot is 20. The maximum you'll shoot on an 80 centimeter, which is you know, a pretty decent size, um, is 60 meters. If you're shooting bare bow, it'll be 50 meters. To give you an idea of what an 80 centimeter target face looks like, if you've gone out to our CTA field and you see the Olympic uh, targets out at distance, they're 122 centimeters. So these are smaller than that so you're shooting on smaller targets essentially but you also got 40 centimeter target and a 60 centimeter target when you go to a field tournament you'll get grouped up with minimum of three people maximum of four and you'll be assigned a target and it's a shotgun start it would take forever if everyone started on one and then went to two you'd have a line of people and groups so you get assigned the target and one of the staff members of the tournament organizers will walk you out to your assignment. So you might start off at number nine and you finish back on number nine. And uh, everyone walks out and it takes about half an hour for everyone to get where they need to be. And then you'll hear an air horn in the distance and that will tell you that it's safe to shoot. So that's the World Archery format. The other format... Oh, sorry, World Archery is 24 by 3. That will be 72 shots, plus whatever practice you put in on the practice range. So 72 shots is important. I'll come talk to that in a little while. NFAA Field Archery, that's the National Field Archery Association, has their own field format, and they have different uh, faces. The NFAA is more challenging because they have 28 targets, and you shoot four per stake. So that's a total of 112 arrows, scoring arrows. It takes longer to walk around the course, there's just more stuff to do. And it's uh, a little bit more tiring, so you definitely have to prepare for that. That's 112 arrows plus your practice. Okay. The NFAA format also has what call, what's called fans and walk-ups. So a fan would be you come up to your target stake, and you'd have four shooting locations. So the first location would be here, one arrow, and then you might be here, two arrow, and then you go three and four. So you get different angles. A walk-up would be your four arrows are shot at four different distances. So you'd maybe start off at 60 yards, then you'd go to 50 yards, and then 45 yards, and then 40. And that would be on the same size target face. So there's loads of variation in field archery. So... NFAA has three different types of faces. World Archery just has the gold, that's all you shoot. NFAA has what's called a field round. And their targets look like this. And it's important to know how you score this, right, Kelly? Uh, we won't go into that. Talk to Kelly and find that story. But I messed up, basically. Uh, this will be five. Anything in the white two rings here would be four and everything in the outer rings would be three. This is a 20 centimeter uh, face that would be used on the short ones. You could have a 33 feet target or a 10 yard target and they're called the birdies. 
So that's the field. With field format, you typically have even number of yardage, which is another difference. World Archery uses meters, NFA uses yards. That's a real nuisance, as we'll talk about later, but you just have to deal with it. A field range, you would have, a field would have 60 yards, 55 yards, 40 yards. They'd all be even numbered based on five yard increments. The maximum you'll shoot is 80 yards, um, which can be a barrier to uh, people trying out field. I always say, if you can't get the distance, don't shoot the arrow. It doesn't matter. You're losing one and you're supposed to be there to have fun. There's plenty of people in the senior, silver senior division that win the state championship that don't take the 80 yard shot. Okay, so the other type of target is called a hunter round. And this is a black face with a white middle. Scored the same way, five, four, three. The difference with the hunter round is you get uneven distances. So you'll get 47 yards or 32 yards, 19 yards, stuff like that. You still have the fans and your walk-ups. Um, there's a different, if you were setting a course up, there's a different number of um, uh, set yardage and fans and walk-ups that you have to use on a hunter and a field round. We don't have to worry about that. We just go up and shoot them. I just put that in there because there's rules on how you set a field range up. It's not arbitrary. There's very strict rules. It wouldn't be great if every single distance was 20 yards or every single distance was 60 yards. It defeats the point. So they have a really good combination of uh, distances, yardage. Now with world archery, this is really important if you shoot unmarked distances, because if you know the relationship, the number of target faces that you'll shoot in a round, you can use that to help estimate distance. I'll talk about that later. The other NFA format, which is a really fun, and this typically is done on the third day of field nationals, and this is the animal round. And you literally are shooting 2D pictures of animals. You'll see, I don't know if you can see that, but there are scoring zones on this target. Around, if I can hold it out straight, there's a, there's a, a ring here. That will be your five. Anything in there is five. Oh, sorry, that's, uh, I'm getting mixed up with traditional. No. Let me start again. That's the middle. Then you've got the second outer ring, and then you've got the third outer ring. Now, the way field work, or animal works, is you get one arrow, and you shoot it, and you have to number your arrows. So arrow number one, and you shoot it. Based on where you hit, you get a different point. So I, th I can't remember exactly what it is, but maybe if on your first arrow you hit the middle, you score a 14. If you hit the outer ring, you'll score a 12. If you hit the outer ring after that, it's 10. If you miss the target, you walk up to the next distance and you shoot arrow number two. And if you hit, you score points, but they're devalued. So instead of a 14 on your first arrow, you might get a 12 on your second arrow. And if you miss with your second arrow, you walk up to a closer range and you shoot with your third arrow. And then that's scored again, it's devalued. So animal rounds are really fun. Um, but with NFAA field, for field nationals, you have three days of shooting. You have the uh, first day of 112 arrows walking the course. You have the second day, 112 arrows walking the course. That would be your hunter round. And then you have your third day, walking the course again, which is your animal round. So you do have to be prepared for a lot of walking and a lot of arrows for that. So now let's look at equipment. So equipment, you have to carry it, as I've mentioned before. You can take a chair. Sometimes, you know, people have arrow tubes attached to their chairs. Uh, compound shooters do that because you're rattling around a lot with your quiver and you're carrying your stuff. Olympic recurve, bow stands typically just get in the way. You've got to put your bow down on uneven ground. So unless it's absolutely hammering down of rain, I just don't take a bow stand. You can lean your bow up against a tree, or you can use the trick where you take an arrow, hopefully one that you don't care about, and you use that as the rest for your bow. So you see that a lot. But the lighter you go, the better it's going to be. Now with... Um, 
field archery, you could be shooting in woods, trees, long grass, all sorts of things. So long trousers is a must. Also, you want a good pair of hiking boots because you may be on very uneven terrain. You may be shooting on a slope where you have to kneel and get down the slope like that. So it's important you get that and bug repellent, sun cream and a hat and all that stuff. Um, now, your bow has to be tuned. So the most important thing is to have your sight settings. You have to know your distances. Now you can go out and do what's called walk back tuning and I'm going to show you my sight and you can create a sight tape. And so this has my pre-written and calculated sight measure. So 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards. One of the reasons if you're shooting field and you're doing world archery and NFAA is you have to deal with meters sight tape and yardage sight tape, which can take a lot of time. The other thing you have to have is your center shot. So your center shot dictates how your arrow flies out of the target and you need to have it flying out in a straight line. Doesn't matter what the distance is. This is generally affected by how, your, how far your plunger is out. Um, you need to be able to shoot at different, different distances without having to adjust your sight laterally. Uh, at my first field tournament, I didn't quite have this, and it cost me a lot of points and lesson learned. Uh, in fact, because field is not as well known, as not as well advertised, as not well pushed, getting the knowledge of how do you even do a field shoot is difficult. And so I've, I've tapped into many people's brains to try and figure this out and then just done it myself and learned these lessons through experience. So if I was going to take someone to a field range, I would say, let's go and figure out your, your distances and let's make sure your center shot is right. And once you get that, life's going to be a lot, lot easier for you. Now, unmarked is probably the toughest challenge. Um, unmarked means you show up to your stake and they don't tell you the distance. Now, this can be done on World Archery Nationals. Um, certainly at the world international level, but also on 3D shoots. So there's tactics on how on earth you figure out how far you're going to shoot. So the, it's all about collecting data. So the first part is you figure out what size of target is on the bale. If you, if you see four targets, you know that they're 40 centimeter targets. If you see two, you know they're 60 centimeter targets. And if you see one, you know it's an 80 centimeter target. The small targets, the 20 centimeters, are always going to be vertical in groups of three. And they're very easy to spot because you can't, they're just difficult to see. You, you know what a 20 is. But let's say I, I know that that's a 20 centimeter target. I know that the range is going to be between 10 meters and 20 meters. If I see a 40 centimeter target on, on the four bale, I know what that range is going to be. It's going to be a minimum of 20, a maximum of 35, I think. And likewise, now the 60s can be a little tricky, but if you get to your bale and there's still people pulling arrows, you can look at the relative proportion of the target height based on the person. So if the target looked to be about this big, like it would come to an, a, an average person's size waist, you know that's a 40 centimeter target. So now you've got your range accordingly. If that target comes down and it's like past their waist, it's probably an 80 centimeter face. So you can calculate your range accordingly. Then you've got your rough distance. Then you have to fine tune it. Now, some people just spend ages and ages and ages visually figuring it out. Some people are, get really good at looking down and looking up, and wherever they look is 10 meters. And then they go 10, 20, 30, 40. So that's another data point. You have to spend a lot of time doing that. Sometimes you might have a fence next to you, and you've got posts in the fence. If you can estimate that each post is 3 meters, you can now count the posts and see and get another measure. 
you might look to see if there's a tree halfway. Now, if you can measure or estimate halfway to that tree, then double it, then you've got another data point. Fine tuning comes, and this, this is kind of complicated, but I'm gonna do my best to show you. If you're shooting with a sight, you try and pick the sight, I'm gonna try and hold this up, the sight ring, it's a, it's a, it's a see-through ring, doesn't have a point in the middle, or a, right? maybe you can see it there. All right, now we're gonna start using a parallax perspective. So, this ring, for me, for my draw length and for my eye, I know that if I'm standing at 20 meters on a 40 centimeter target, if I put the edge of the sight on the edge of the target face, the, the other side of the sight is gonna be bang on in the gold. Right? If you did this further away, then the sight's gonna be inside the gold and you can start counting off the rings inside the gold. Does that make sense? It's like, as you get further away from something, it just gets smaller. Well, you use that relative to your fixed target. And people that do this can get really good at it. Jake, uh, I've seen um, Vic Wunderly do it. And of course, the trick is you have to be able to hold steady. And you have to know your, your sight pin and how it works for you. The trick with unmarked distances is you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to hold anything up you're not allowed to look at a notebook or you're, you're not allowed to use a range finder um, you're not allowed to use binoculars for range finding there's some there's some uh, conspiracy theories and well people on international level they do the coaches can cheat using binoculars and call out the ranges which is not cool um, but you are allowed to let down and so your first if you're in doubt, your first uh, setup, full draw, is to uh, is to assess your sight pin on the target to see if you can get a fine-tuned distance, and then you let down, and then you might adjust your sight, and then you go up and you shoot the shot. But your first arrow may be high, and so it's best to not mess with your sight. You just aim off. So that's another skill to to get with. And once you've aimed off and you've sighted in, you can get pretty accurate on it. But of course, that all takes practice. To have a go at field archery, you don't have to do all this stuff. You're not going to have unmarked. All you really need to know is your sight distance and your tune and make sure your equipment is good. And then just go have fun. Just shoot, shoot the targets, walk around. Field archery is such a... Uh, a calmer, more relaxed, chill environment. You're walking around a course for three hours with the same four people. You're not on a line with 300, 400 people. There's no spectators behind you. You're really just a self-contained unit and you, it's a great way to meet new friends. Um, and it's a really good way of, of testing your technical, mental and skills out in a different environment that changes on every shot. So, here is a range finder. You just you put this up, you click it, it gives you a reading. This is what I use for my sight tapes. I literally go out to the field range. I start at 10 meters. I shoot three arrows, make sure they're grouped. I make a note of where my sight is. I walk back five meters, take a sight, shoot another three, group. And I keep doing that until I feel like I've got a group at every distance I need to shoot at. And then I get home and I get a bit of paper and I just write it all out and I stick it on the site. There are programs out there to help you do this. Archers has a site tape, um, Archers Advantage, and stuff like that. You need very good measurements and they're typically more um, geared towards compound. You have to measure the distance between your eye and your anchor, for instance, and then your eye and your sight. Uh, you have to know your draw. You have to know your feet per second. And once you type all that into the software, it generates the site tape for you and you stick it on your on your site and they can be really accurate if you can get that working now let's look at elevation 
the other thing that gets really fun with, with field archery is elevation. You're not shooting on a flat target all the time. You might be shooting up at 30 degrees, down at 30 degrees. You might be shooting off a platform that's been built that's 30 or 40 feet off the ground, um, which is quite funny. You have to literally walk up a ladder, get to the top, and shoot down. I've uh, had targets where I've shot at that kind of level. Now, if you've got anything, uh, if you have any issue with heights, um, that's a good challenge for your mental game because you're up against the ledge and you're looking down. You only really get those on a very few set of courses and typically at the national level. Um, there was a course at Eagle Lake, and I really wish I'd have done this, but you were shooting up on like a water, uh, like a, a water tower type contraption, but they actually anchored you on. They would actually put a carabiner rope on so you couldn't go anywhere and you were you are down at this sort of angle here. The angles, not only does it affect your body, it also affects your draw length. As you go up, your draw length can actually reduce. And so if you're shooting off a clicker, that's going to be interesting. So you have to learn how to cope with that. Um, Barebow especially will notice a difference if you're anchoring up here. And you, and you start moving in elevation. And what do we know if your draw length changes? If it drops, then you're going to get less power in the arrow. It's going to get go less distance. So you have to know how that works. With elevation, whether you're going up or down, you typically cut the distance. Um, it kind of hurts my head when I start thinking about it. It just is. With a downhill trajectory, you don't have so much of an arc. So you could be literally shooting a 50 meter shot. And if the angle is steep enough, your sight setting might be on 20 meters. Uh, same for up. If you go up, you'd think it would go longer. It's spending less time in the air. You have to draw, it's all a matter of triangles, but you end up cutting. There are cut charts out there if you get if you really want to start getting serious and dialing in on this stuff, you can find a rule of thumb, 10%, 10% cut every 10 degrees. Um, 30 degrees is a thing that's found in nature a lot, you know, angles of mountains and stuff like that. Typically don't get too much more than 30 degrees, but I remember Vic Wonderly has told me on one nationals, he was basically shooting down a cliff face. Um, 50, foot, 50 meters down a cliff face. I haven't heard of too many of those types of things. There's a great video from the Field World Championships in Italy from a couple of years ago, which one of our CTA coaches went to. He made the world team, which is highly impressive. Um, and they were shooting on ski slopes and they were shooting up 40 degree angles. And not only is that challenging to do, it's also challenging to walk up. And that was the course. So that was an interesting one. But most of the time, it's going to be a pretty benign. It's going to be a flat course. You're going to have two or three angled shots. It all depends. Austin Archery Club, it's very, very flat. And so you can go around and you can, you can get an experience of field archery in our town. Um, and I'm, I'm a member there, and I am also love taking people out there and introducing them to this for the first time. So if anyone's watching and they wanted to do that, and you're a CTA member, Happy to introduce the field archery in that environment. We've also set up field ranges and we did a little league uh, CTA and that was really fun. And, you know, maybe when we get back out of lockdown, we can have like one Saturday every now and again and we set up a field range so people can come out and just experience different targets and, uh, and, and see what that feels like. Um, so now... Let's think about the challenges and we'll just sum up the challenges of field. So you have to deal with the rough terrain, which is why your hiking boots is good. You have to deal with the visual stimulus. So a target face, which is down a tunnel of trees, is going to look shorter than it is. A target face, which is in an open space, is going to look longer than it is. A target that's over water is also going to look longer than it is. You've got 
trees blowing, you've got low hanging branches, you've just got a lot of visual stimulus. So it's really important to have a really strong mental game. So field archery makes you a better archer. You, it, it tests your technique out under the most difficult conditions and sometimes the most distracting conditions. You might be standing, there's a rock under your foot. But if you run your mental program and you've got a really good solid technical routine, then you can cope with that. We have a question. Do they have qualifying events that lead up to archery participation in the national? No. You can sign up. Last year I did NFA Field Nationals. Um, trained really hard for that because it's a lot of arrows and it's a three-day event, but I didn't have to qualify. You can also shoot in USA Archery Field Nationals and you don't have to qualify. Um, a great way to start on field, you can totally jump in on doing that. Just be know, know that in, in USA Archery Field Nationals, the first uh, day is unmarked distances. So you have to be able to do unmarked distance. Um, and if a TSAA, we have the indoor sidewalk competition. So they also have an outdoor sidewalk competition and that is a field competition. And as of last year, they changed the rules to make it more accessible. They got rid of the fans. They got rid of the walk up. They got rid of the 80 yard shot and they cut down the number of targets from 28 to 24 and they cut down the number of arrows from four to three. So they brought it more in line with the world archery format so that the, the level of it, the barrier to entry was just lower. Um, you didn't have to spend five hours walking around a course. You didn't have to train for 112 plus arrows. You didn't have to have a bow powerful enough to get 80 yards, stuff like that. And you didn't have to deal with fans and walk-ups because they do take a little bit more time um, to do the walk-ups. So that's a great way to start off as well. And they're, really chill tournaments. Um, Bubba's at Canyon Lake is a really fun uh, course. And I go down there a lot. And you've also got uh, one in Waco, which is supposed to be the best course in the state. Uh, you've also got Buffalo Archery in Houston. And they, they host two to three events. And all you need is three scores for Siwa. Um And then you do sectionals and you can do state. And then if you're, if you're, if you're really going to do go into field nationals, I would highly recommend looking at that. It's a really fun weekend. A lot of camaraderie in the NFAA. So we have our challenges, terrain, stimulus, we have a mental game, we have a technical game, how to deal with elevation, how do you shoot with your clicker when you're up here. If you're a barebow archer, same thing. If you're a compound archer, same thing. Um, is your tuning up to scratch? Do you know your sight tapes? Is your center shot good? Do you have spares? Distance judgment comes in useful. Even on marked distances, you, you need to account for the cut. If you're shooting a higher poundage, the, cut's gonna, the, 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 the cut of the elevation isn't going to affect you that much. But if you're shooting a 30 pound bow and you're shooting uphill at 45 meters, it probably will affect you two or three rings. So you need to get that um, figured out. It's difficult to practice this. Um, I've seen people stand on uh, containers at their range to try and get the angle down. Um, and if you've been out of the CTA field, you may have seen a shooting off of the podium to, down to a very close up target just to try and get some kind of angle to feel what the body is. Technically, there's a couple of different ways you can deal with this. There's one school of thought is you set your shoulders kind of like a golfer playing in a bunker. You set your shoulders before you draw and you shoot that way. Vic Wonderly showed me that you want to pivot from the waist when you're at draw and then go for it. Shooting NTS, I haven't quite figured out the most optimal. If you watch Brady Ellison shoot, he kind of sets his shoulders, he'll come up, you anchor, transfer, expand, and go that way. For really steep elevations, transfer and expansion may take a bit more effort because of that difference in your clicker setting. So that's just a technical thing to, to try and figure out. 
But hopefully with all that information you're throwing, you now start to see the difference between outdoor target archery and field archery. You don't have half of these things to deal with in outdoor target archery. You just show up, shoot, your sight never changes, your lateral never changes. You don't have to cut for distance. You might have to deal with wind. Um, you don't have to carry your bow. Uh, you don't have to carry a chair. You don't have to, you know, all that stuff. Um, you don't really need hiking boots. You know, you can have more comfortable boots. So there's a, there's a whole whole lot of different stuff, and you're certainly not going to walk as far. Now, 3D. 3D is essentially the same as field archery, except you're shooting on um, foam targets of animals, different sizes uh, for different distances. A great uh, event that we did last year for the first time was the Total Archery Challenge. And it's not a competition, it's a course. You show up, you shoot one arrow per target. It's 28 targets, so it's a lot of effort to shoot 28 target, 28 arrows in a day. But that means you don't get a marker, you don't get an arrow to see if your sight settings are right, you either hit it or you don't. So for compound archers, pressure's on because they're going to be expected with the, you know, all the peep sights and the magnifiers and feet per second known and their sight tapes to pretty much hit that target. Um, bare bow recurve, bit more of a challenge. I've set up one of our CTA targets in the corner there, you can see it. It's in the, it's in the corner of the screen here. That's Reggie, our turkey. Now, it's never been shot, so we're going to christen it live here in a little while. We're going to shoot the first shot into Reggie. But in Reggie, in the middle, anywhere on the arrow, he's typically scored five. There's a kill zone, which is where the core typically gets replaced because it gets the most, uh, most activity. That's typically an eight. And then based on the format you're shooting, there's going to be an inner circle, just like the 2D field targets that I show, that I showed earlier. Somewhere in there, there's going to be a kill zone, which is going to be worth 12 points. It might be worth 14 if you call it. It all depends on the format that you're shooting. The ASA, the, the ASA is a highly organized um, and very popular 3D tournament uh, that, that goes all through the year. It has pro divisions. All the top archers shoot it. It's, it's very much... Um, graded on ability so you can go into the, the novice and then gradually you cat up you increase your category as you get more proficient if you place in the top three uh three times in your category then you you have to go up into the next category there's money to be won there's lots of stuff going in and then they have um asa worlds and have asa state um it's, it's pretty cool world archery 3d you shoot two arrows uh, per target and so that can be really useful if you're instinctive or if you're bare bow or traditional because you do get a marker to try one of these things out um, world archery 3d is unmarked so you have to get really good at distance measurement and again there's tactics all the same tactics that i talked about with um, the terrain and getting good at estimation but you've also got different sizes of 3D targets. So if you know the 100 targets that Reinhardt will make, and you know that the moose is only is only used at 65 yards maximum, then that gives you a point at which you can figure this stuff out. Um, our total archery challenge last year was even more challenging than a normal field tournament because they would put like a small rabbit and it would be just behind a, a rock face. There is no grass, there is no soft places. So if you miss that, your arrow's toast. And at, the, at all the stakes, as you walked around, there was a little traffic cone. And if you smash an arrow in the previous one, you put it in the next one's traffic cone. So you could tell what was coming up. You could tell which, which um, target people were having a hard time with. Uh, Total Archery Challenge also sets up um, forks, so you're having to shoot through trees, very narrow gaps. Um, they really push the barrier, especially for the compound archers. 
and they have multiple courses. So you can try the locals course, which is non-competitive, um, shorter distances, much more, much more uh, gentle on you. Uh, or if you're a really hardcore compound archer, you could be shooting 140 yard shots down a cliff that you had to take a ski chair to get up um, into a buffalo that's set way down the canyon. So that looks a lot of fun and, and a lot of people just love the 3D. So that was a lot of stuff. Before we now go and christen Reggie, does anyone have any questions for that? Yes, I guess we're all waiting with bated breath. So meet the Chris and Reggie. I'm going to do this on my bare bow. I've just set him up. So you can see I've got a, a world archery target set up. At, I think that's about 10 meters from where I'm standing. And Reggie set up at eight meters. So it's going to be a really long string walk for eight meters on my bare bow. But I think we're up to the challenge. So. This one is, this shot's gonna be for all of our CTA founders who listened to me and got the 3D targets. And I said, this is gonna be so much fun, we should get some. So they bought three, Fluffy, Reginald, and Godzilla. And here we go. So the christening of Reggie, live on Facebook. You'll never play the piano again. Let's stick this drill three in there. And I'll take the camera up a little bit closer and you can look at what the foam looks like. So that was a little bit low. That was a little bit low, but it was absolutely grouping, so that tells me my string walk is pretty much as low as it can go and I now need to aim off a little bit if I want to nail this. There, got that one right in the middle. So we christened Reggie, let me take the camera over there and we can have a look. Uh, let me see. There you go. So I don't know if you can see, but inside the, the, the foam, you'll see other circles etched. And they're the different scoring zones I talked about based on um, the formats that you were shooting on. So, yeah, there's Reggie. Poor Reggie. Okay, so... While I'm here, we can start wrapping this up. This has been really fun. I hope this has given you some kind of insight into what field archery is. Um, it's a lot of stuff, a lot of technicalities in there. But again, it doesn't have to be. You can simplify it. Sight marks, center shot, good boots, and be able to walk three miles and have fun. The events that I really enjoy most, outdoor sidewalks, are really fun, very chill, a great way to introduce yourself to competitive field archery. TSAA, um, which is hosted in down in um, Canyon Lake, that's a really fun weekend. That's world archery format. They have their mark, the, 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 the yardage markers on plates, face down so that you can walk up, practice your estimation, and then look to see whether you were right or not. And they do that for people that are preparing for nationals. Uh, and it's just a nice vibe at that competition. You, you know, Barry Watson and Bubba and, uh, and Rick and the, and the TSA folks put a lot of effort into making that course. And there's a barbecue afterwards and there's food and everyone sits around in the award ceremony and it's, it's just a really nice feel to it. Uh, very welcoming for anyone wants to try out. 
uh, the field archery. Um, so Cywats, and then like I say, I've got um, the uh, Austin Archery Club membership. I can take guests out there just to see, just to experience what it's like to shoot down a tunnel of trees. The other thing that I could, I would also recommend anyone doing, if you have walked the green belt or if you have trails near your house, go out for your walk next time, take a stretch band, and as you're walking down a rocky terrain, imagine what would it be like if I shot here and there was a target down there and use visualization and see what it would be like. If you're walking with uh, someone from your household, have them carry a target and just stand down there at different distances and shoot at it so you can imagine what it feels like. And I did that to prep for my very first. So there's another question here. Is the three mile standard for any field event or do some run longer? It's not standard at all. Every, every field course is going to be different. Field nationals last year, which is in South Dakota, Yankton, um, that's at the head of the NFAA. They have four complete field courses and they're amazing. So when I was running into the field nationals, they published um, they published a picture every day for a couple of months of this is target number three, these are the distances, this is what it looks like. So I wrote all those distances down and I visualized myself shooting at those and tried to prepare myself to what I could expect. And that was the that I didn't realize that that was only one of three courses, and that was the one that I never shot on. So that research, you know, it gave me some benefit. Um, day one was like a forest um, type course, and that was probably three and a half miles ish. Day two was down by the river, and it was completely different. It was open. There was more walking involved. Um, one of the most memorable shots. Uh, was a 70 meter shot downhill and behind the target bail, which was an 80 centimeter target, so not that big. Um, behind it was the Missouri River. So if you missed that target bail, your arrow was now floating off to Kansas. So that was a really memorable and fun shoot uh, target. And then I also remember another one where they'd had massive amounts of rain and they'd had to build wooden platforms just narrow enough for one person from the stake all the way through to the target. And on the walk-ups, you were literally standing on a very shaky piece of timber that had water lapping over it. Everywhere around you was water. And Now, I've never fallen over shooting an archery bow, but your brain suddenly goes... That would be really bad if you fall over here. You're going to get soaked. So you have to put that in your mind. But I remember shooting a 70-yard shot on a very moving platform that was water all around it into a very small target and drilling it. And that was one of the highlights of that weekend. So challenging, rewarding, fun, different. You get a lot of stories and a lot of experience from doing it. Um, but that was tiring for sure. To prepare for that, I was shooting 130 arrows a day, um, consecutive days to make sure I had the endurance. And it was actually completely fine by the time I did the um, field nationals itself. And then that third day when you shoot an animal round, it's the same amount of walking, but it's far, far less arrows. And it's kind of like the dessert after the main meal. Everyone's just enjoying the animal round and uh, um, it, it's a really good experience. So. I think that might be all the questions we've got, but I'm happy to do more. I can talk about field all day, so feel free to ping me off to the side. Again, every discipline can shoot this. Instinctive is going to be really challenging, but you get a lot of instinctive shooters doing 3D because 3D instinctive or barebow, you only have to deal with a maximum of 30 yards. So that's a different ball game than shooting 50 yards. Another event to watch out for, and I'll plug that quick, um, is the Reinhardt 100 that's at Cinnamon Creek. Reinhardt take out every single target that they make from the smallest squirrel to the largest giraffe uh, that you need a ladder to get your arrows out of. And they go and host that. And you just go up there and shoot. And again, it's not competitive. 
if, and you just go around and you can spend six hours shooting every single Reinhardt target. And uh, we were going to do that this year, but of course that was cancelled. So there we go. All right. So thanks for attending, everybody. This was really fun. Again, give feedback if this was useful, if it was too much information, or if there's any other topics that you'd like to see, or if I could do anything differently to make this more engaging. I do appreciate you sitting down in front of a computer and watching me go on for 40 or 50 minutes. We try and keep this short and snappy and useful. Um, but please do give us your feedback, and uh, it's something that we're very happy to do. All right, you're very welcome, Yara. So have a great day, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time.